everyone, we are Team 3, aka the Bee's Knees, and this is Honeypot and Sim Analytics. For our capstone, we aim to strengthen cybersecurity analysis and incident response by deploying a honeypot and integrating a WAZA Sim. This diagram gives a visual representation on what our project achieved. Linode, what is it? Linode is a cloud hosting provider focusing on Linux-powered VMs. We chose it over other platforms because of its user-friendly interface, and we found it easier to integrate with Debian versus other applications. Honeypot, so how is this significant in cybersecurity? Well, a honeypot is a decoy system that mimics vulnerable applications and is designed to attract, lure potential attackers into interacting with it. In doing so, security teams are able to monitor and study these malicious actors' tactics and techniques. So now that we created our Linode, launched our honeypot in a cloud environment, we then chose Teapot by T-Mobile as our honeypot preference. It is a framework that integrates multiple honeypots, each with different capabilities. Lastly, now that our Teapot is running out into the wild, we then launched our agent onto our Waza SIM. Besides Waza's user-friendly UI, we also chose it because it provides steps of remediation and resources for patching CVEs. When you combine the honeypot and SIM, it's like an extra layer of defense. This means more thorough investigations of security incidences. This project breakdown is essential to how an organization can replicate our security defense mechanism. On July 31st, our attack map showed high volume of DDoS attacks from Brazil, hitting our teapot in increments of 30 minutes. We also encountered UDP, TCP, SSH, Telnet, and brute force attacks coming in from various parts of the world. China, Egypt, even the US. Top MITRE attack tactics were credential access, most common was password guessing and brute force, discovery, which mostly consisted of network sniffing, and endpoint denial of service. Continued patterns of brute force login attempts led us to suspect bots as the attackers, using default credentials of busy box based IoT devices. Okay, we're going to be running through how to get Linode working with Waza integrated with Teapot. So we just clicked a Ubuntu server. We're now setting up our admin login credentials. And once we got that set, we go down, click OK. We're going to get our SSH and log into the said Ubuntu machine with SSH. And the first thing we're going to want to do is sudo app update to make sure we have all the latest versions of everything so everything will run properly. Now we are going to get Docker. Docker is what is going to be running the containers needed to generate the uh, authentication to get into our Waza. So this takes a minute. Now we're going to head back to our Waza documentation, enter in a few more commands which will ultimately lead us to our Waza Docker directory and they just want us to enter a command that will pretty much run a script that is opening up the containers needed to validate and give us our credentials. So now we go back to Linode, we take the reverse DNS, go up to our URL, https colon whack whack, put that reverse DNS, enter said login credentials that we have gained, and we're in. Okay, we're going to be going through a couple of the most common vulnerability exposures or CVEs our teapot has encountered. There were many denial of service attacks or even remote code execution specifically associated with BusyBox. It's a software that provides many command line utilities often embedded in smaller environments to provide tools like file manipulation and more. Next we have CVE 2021-38185. This affects CPIO, a command line utility used in Unix-like operating systems. At the top left is a proof of concept that demonstrates an integer overflow that leads to arbitrary code execution. What do hackers want to do with your data? Well, they have data ransom, identity theft. Ultimately, any way they can, they will try to take advantage of you. So how can we mitigate this?
It's up to us as cybersecurity professionals to stay up to date on malicious IPs to blacklist for firewall rule sets and continue research for ever-evolving cyber threats we encounter. Special thanks to our mentors, our teachers, and our fellow alumni.